socks and my hobnail boots, I go where the timbers fall. When there's work to be done, don't mess around, just sing right up for Paul. Hey, Paul! I'm coming, boys! Paul Bunya! Paul Bunya! So my preference for a big knife is uh, summertime. Anytime you don't need uh, big chunks of wood to stay warm, just something uh, to cook with. Uh, for me, big knives are suited for uh, anything about wrist thick and smaller. Um, I don't want to sit and chop all day long on a, a big log with a, a large knife. I'd rather have an axe. It's about wrist thick. I've already made a couple cuts here. Set the knife. This is a dead standing cottonwood. So it's not much of a, a challenge. Just to go over what uh, Perry talks about in his video uh, using big knives, uh, he uses the four strike method, which is, uh, like I say, wrist thick and under. And uh, it's a pretty good technique, it's fast. Just nice easy flicks out away from your body. So as you can see, you can process quite a bit of wood uh, quicker than uh, taking it and finding it two trees and busting it in half if you don't have a big knife. So there's one advantage for the big knife. Another advantage to a big knife is uh, limbing. The easiest and fastest best way to limb is to hold the, the piece out an angle to the ground like this and uh, chop away from you going with the, the direction of the uh, limb growth they'll come off easier that way big knives like this uh, are uh, a great chopping tool for like I say small stuff and uh, if they have the right uh, grind or if you you treat it yourself like a uh, Mac or picked or Colhane I'm not sure which uh, which name he goes by on here, but uh, he's a great guy and he does a, a machete mod. Um, that's where I got this idea for this, uh, this Z-Sear model. A high grind up here, mine's convex, max is scandy, um, and then a low grind out front. One of the ways to uh, split wood with a, a big knife is uh, same way you would with a hatchet. Um, keep the uh, knife and the wood together and uh, slam them down on your anvil or your chopping block. The main thing is with this, uh, you want to watch out so you don't slam your knuckles into the piece of wood that you're working with on a big knife. Alright, feather sticks with a big knife, feather stick shavings, whatever. Alright, now there's the different varied sizes. I didn't do a million of them, but you get the idea. You've seen me do it a hundred times. These are light enough to catch a spark with a fire, fire steel. And these are your uh, ones that would catch with a, a match flame. Big knife, pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are where big knives shine. They got uh, lots of control. 
and uh, minimal effort to do something like this. Large notches with a, a big knife. You always want to turn your workpiece around so uh, you're not swinging towards your hand, towards your body. Planing with a big knife or flatting an area surface. You can do this uh, with your uh, feathers too if you prefer to do it this way. So you can get a pretty flat, smooth surface. All right, that's how you do a. Uh, that's how you strike a, a fire steel with a big knife if you don't have any flint. I'd much rather use a, a pocket knife, of course, if I have it, or if I can uh, find flint in the area, um, I'd rather use that because it's more controlled. Um, but if you have a nice uh, square edge on your back of your knife, you can. Uh, Put your tinder underneath the uh, the knife, of course, and, and uh, just pull it back, and you'll get uh, pretty good sparks. Everybody has an idea of uh, what a big knife is. Uh, my idea is uh, anything over about six inches is a big knife to me. Thanks, Paul.